Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, it seems like in completely different climate that we're living in this week versus last week. Uh, last week, uh, we showed you guys that it was getting down in the negative digits here, and that is just unheard of here in Southern Missouri. And today, the high is 55 degrees and it's sunny out. Uh, what a crazy few weeks weather-wise. We have survived what a lot of you have been going through too, the big polar vortex that came through pretty much the entire middle of the country. And so now, as Kevin said, things are warming up, the snow is melting, and now it's time for us to kind of survey the effects of that polar vortex and see how things survived. Specifically today, we're gonna to be taking you inside our unheated greenhouse. We've had things planted in our raised bed garden inside there all winter long. We planted lettuce and cilantro, radishes, spinach, and some kohlrabi. We planted those back in October or November. Yeah, we've been harvesting that stuff most of the winter, uh, and it's just been really nice to have a fresh supply of things to pick all winter, especially the lettuce. Uh, we have a salad almost every day, so it's been really nice to come out to the greenhouse and pick lettuce, you know, a few, every few days and have it in the refrigerator ready to eat. Um, we're just so happy and feel so thankful that we have that. Right, so this greenhouse or high tunnel or whatever you wanna call it, is unheated. We have never heated these. So we're just trying to use it the best we can and as successfully as we can, just as it sits here. Right, so just so you know that this greenhouse is a 16 foot wide by 32 foot long. It has the roll up sides on it. And this is one of the packages that we got from growersolution.com. Uh, we've told you guys about them in the past, a great company. And we actually have two of these exactly the same size and we're really happy with the way they work. So let's go inside, we'll take a look at the plants. We wanna show you what we did to get them through all of this cold weather, which, spoiler alert, isn't a whole lot, uh, but we're amazed at how they did. Let's go inside and take a look. All right, so we're inside the greenhouse. Now this is our raised bed. This raised bed is six feet wide, 22 feet long, and about 18 inches deep. Uh, this is the raised bed that uh, we're basically using just over the winter. Uh, it keeps everything nice and warm. Now, the only thing that we've done this year to protect the plants for most of the winter has been just this row cover. And this is a real thin row cover. Uh, and this is all we've used all winter until just this last week. This last week, we decided to also add some blankets uh, that we laid just over the tops of the plants. We didn't really use anything very fancy, just old blankets that we had. They're not even super thick blankets, uh, just old blankets that we had from when the kids were little and things. And that's what we used to put over the plants for the last uh, two weeks. Let's open this up and we'll show you guys how the plants did. Overall, this lettuce here did amazing. Now it looks kind of choppy here and there because we've been harvesting lettuce all winter long. The, the lettuce that is still growing here was just gorgeous and it still is. We're so surprised at how well it handled the really, really cold weather, but I really do believe that the only reason it looks this great is because we covered this all with those blankets. We're still gonna be getting a good harvest off of all of this lettuce for a few more weeks anyway, because soon all of these need to be taken out so we can replant for the spring. So all of this lettuce we made sure to cover with the blankets. We weren't able to cover everything in this uh, raised bed because we just didn't have enough blankets. So let's go down to the other end so we can show you the plants that didn't get covered, what still is alive, what is kind of dying, um, and uh, just see how it goes from there. One thing that really amazed us was our spinach. We didn't cover the spinach because really we didn't have real great germination with spinach this last fall. So we don't have a whole lot of it growing. We've picked a few here, leaves here and there to put in our salads and some to put in soups and things. But in general, we were willing to risk whether or not it would do okay. 
Uh, we really thought the frost would get it because like I said, it was a couple nights down in you know negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and that's pretty darn cold inside of this greenhouse. But look, the spinach actually made it through that cold weather uh, without being covered at all other than just this thin row cover on top of the bed. So next in this raised bed we have our radishes and some kohlrabi. Now the radishes really had gotten overgrown. They were too big, they were getting kind of woody. So we decided not to cover those at all. At this point, they'll just become pig food. The pigs will absolutely love them. So no big shocker that those pretty much got wrecked by the frost. Now the kohlrabi on the other hand, we really thought because they're in the brassica family that they would, uh, you know, that they would do okay, that they would probably make it through. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't make it through either. Uh, it looks like they pretty much got destroyed by the frost. But again, we'll pull those up. We'll give those to the pigs. Not too big of a deal. Uh, we're going to be replanting all of this stuff for spring in just a few weeks anyway. So uh, those two things we didn't cover, and they pretty much got destroyed by the frost. Now this last row we did cover with a blanket, and that is our cilantro. And it did really well. Now it looks a little bit smooshed and it doesn't really look the greatest and really that's because of the weight of the blanket that we had on there. But it survived really well with the additional protection of that blanket. Now I can come out here and cut this all and preserve it and put it in the freezer so that I can pull that out and use it in our salsas during the summer. There have been a lot of people who have been wondering if this kind of a system, an unheated greenhouse, would work in their climate, especially in more northern climates than here in southern Missouri, Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, maybe southern Canada. Can you get away with using an unheated greenhouse and can you grow things over the winter? And I hope that this will give you all some hope that you can make this work. Maybe blankets on top of your lettuce and your plants, you know, that probably wouldn't be good for the entire winter. But this should, this should give you guys hope that you can grow in the middle of the winter without having to spend a ton of money on energy, fuel to heat a greenhouse like this. It can be done just with a little bit of extra effort and maybe a little bit more research. Now, of course, everything that we're growing in here right now, it's they're cold weather plants. We're not uh, trying to grow tomatoes and peppers and, and those kinds of things because those really cannot grow through this kind of weather, even with the extra support of a blanket. Uh, now, that is why uh, we did move a couple really sensitive plants that we had in here into our sprout house just temporarily to get them through this super cold spell. Uh, we have some artichoke plants and some rosemary and thyme that we moved those buckets. I do want to bring those back out because the weather is going to get nice enough that they'll be able to survive the, the cooler evening temperatures. Uh, so keep that in mind when planning what to do over the winter. And we're going to go grab those plants and bring them back into the greenhouse. this artichoke and the rosemary and the uh, thyme. They'll be so happy to be back out here in the sunshine. Now, did you guys hear how talkative the turkeys have been? Man, they're just enjoying the sunshine too. And they love it when we walk by, lots of chatter from them. Let's head back to the sprout house. There are a couple things that we want to show you back in there. Well, we're back inside the sprout house and I wanna to talk to you guys about a pretty severe problem that we've been having in here. For those of you who haven't been following for a while, uh, we recently converted this building on our homestead into a place where we can start our seeds for all of the plants that we're gonna sell at the farmer's market this coming year, 
along with all the plants that we plant ourselves in our own gardens. Uh, it's been working out really well. We've insulated this building. We put in all of our grow lights, our shelves. Uh, it's just really been a great space to be able to do all of this. But about a week or so ago, we started to notice some issues with our plants. Now, I told you guys when we first built this building or when we first converted this building that I had installed back here an unvented uh, propane heater in here. And there were a few of you who said we might have some issues with that. I was really hoping that that wouldn't be the case, but it appears that over time, that unvented heater is causing us some pretty major problems with our plants. So I don't want you guys to have the same problem down the road. Let me kind of show you what's going on. Here's one tray of our plants. Now there are certain things that seem to be more affected by this than others. One of the big ones though that we've read is going to be affected is tomatoes. Luckily, we're not at the point yet where we're starting our tomatoes for the season, so we haven't had to worry about that, but we need to do some corrective actions before we get to tomato season. So here's a tray of plants that we have started. You can see that we have cabbage, cauliflower, kale, collards, and some cilantro. The first thing that we started to know problems with, or that we started to see problems with was our uh, cabbage. We actually noticed it in a couple different trays. Now initially we thought this was being caused by the LED grow lights that we're using. We thought maybe they were too strong and burning the plants. We even actually mentioned that in a video recently that we thought maybe we had the lights too close to the plants. Well we raised the lights up to the appropriate level uh, using a light tester and uh, realized that even after we did that plants that hadn't been previously damaged were still getting damaged which made us realize that maybe it wasn't the lights at all that was causing the problems. There had to have been another source. I remembered some of you mentioning that we might have a problem with the unvented heater, and that got me digging further into what some of those problems could be. There are two things that happen when you burn propane fuel that are bad for the plants. There's two different gases that are given off. Normally, like in your house, those would go up the chimney and outside, and you would never have a problem with it. But with one of these unvented heaters, those things stay inside. Now they're not harmful to people, but they are harmful to the plants. Those two things are sulfur gas and ethylene gas. And both of those are what will kill the plants as they start to grow. I found some pictures online of other people who had these problems and some from universities that were showing different stages of the plants dying from those gases and that looks exactly like what's going on here. Now, if you're interested in reading, you know, the real science behind all of it, I'll leave a link in our description to that article so you guys can see it, um, but, because it gets pretty scientific. So, um, but we're convinced that that's what's causing the problems with our plants. So what we've actually done is for the last week or so now, we've turned off the propane heater in here, and we've actually just been heating with a space heater, which, is not ideal at all and it's pretty expensive to be doing it but we couldn't let all of these plants die i've ordered since that time i've ordered a what's called direct vent propane heater it'll look very similar to what we have here but it'll vent outside and all of those gases will be outside instead of inside of the building the downside to that is those types of heaters are considerably more expensive we picked this heater up just at our local uh, Lowe's. I think it was around $135. The direct vent heaters are around $500. Um, I'll leave a link to the one that we ordered. It's in our Amazon shop. Uh, you guys take a look at that. So I just wanted to discuss this with you guys, tell you guys what's going on in here because this is some important stuff. Uh, having this part of our homestead business up and running so that we can successfully grow more and more plants every year to be able to provide more at the farmer's market, maybe even do additional farmer's markets, that will be a good source of income for our homestead. But we're still working out the kinks on all of it. Uh, we were really hoping this ventless heater wouldn't cause any problems. Uh, unfortunately, it did, so we need to just correct it, move on, and hope that we can expand as time goes on. Uh, it's all part of learning. It's all part of growing a business. You're going to make mistakes as you go along, but the best thing is to just get back up, uh, save what we can. There's still some of these plants that are going to do fine. We, we found the problem in time. Uh, we're going to get more started soon, so we'll have a good display of plants at the farmer's market this spring. All right, well, I don't want to leave you guys on a down note with all of our dead plants here. 
Instead, I know a lot of you are wondering how the piglets are doing. We had piglets born just three days ago, uh, right at the end of the polar vortex. The, probably one of the coldest nights we had is the night that the piglets were born. Let's go take a look and see how everybody's doing. Here you go, Myrtle. We've been coming out several times a day to give Myrtle water. Uh, we're not giving her just a pan to keep in there all the time because we're afraid that the piglets are going to fall in the water bowl, get chilled, and then that will be harmful for them. So we're just coming out, you know, maybe four or five times a day, giving her a decent amount of water to drink. Seems to be doing the trick. But she is doing so awesome with these, with these piglets. She is just being the best mom. Now we have four boys and a girl. Um, there's one that was the runt and it is about half the size of the biggest piglet. The first night we were really concerned because that night uh, it got down to you know single digits and we really thought that little one just seemed really weak, like it maybe wasn't going to make it. But that little guy has just been a trooper. He's pulled through. Now he's running around, he's playing with all of the others, he's pushing other ones out of the way to get to one of her teats, and he's just really thriving. So we're super happy with the way all of these piglets are doing. Well, looks like everybody's gonna get another turn to eat. Now we've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about whether or not we're gonna be selling any of the piglets from this litter. Uh, the answer is yes, we will be selling some of the piglets. Because our sows aren't registered Idaho pasture pigs, even though they are pure Idaho pasture pigs, they're not registered. The person we got them from never registered them, and because of that, we couldn't register them. Um, we're not gonna be selling any of these piglets as breeders. We just don't feel right about that. We really want to maintain the integrity of the Idaho pasture pigs. We think the best way to do that is to only offer registered stock as breeders, which at this time we can't do. Now, Charlie, our boar, is a registered Idaho pasture pig, and we're actually on the lookout to buy some registered sows or gilts to add to our herd, so down the road, we can offer registered breeding stock. This time around, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna actually be keeping the female and one of the males as our own feeder pigs for this year, so they'll be meat for our family, and then the other three males will be offering up for sale. We're not exactly sure which ones yet. We're not exactly sure when they're gonna be ready for sale. It's just gonna depend on how fast they grow. So when we get ready to do that, they'll be listed on our Facebook page. Um, I'll tell you guys, we're getting a ton of emails about it. Uh, at this time, we're not taking pre-orders. We're not doing any of that. Now, the best way for you to do that is to look for our Living Traditions Homestead Facebook page and follow us there so that you can see when we have them for sale. That looks like they're getting used to us. That's good. We want them to be tame. You know how nice these pigs are. Hi, little guy. Hi, little guy.
Well guys, that is what is going on on the homestead. Lots of good things, some things we need to work on. I do wanna let you know that we've been posting little videos and pictures and stuff of the piglets on our Facebook page and the Instagram page in the story section. So if you wanna see almost daily what's going on with them, make sure you check that out. You guys wanna thank you so much for spending time with us today. The best way that you can help us is to share our videos and don't forget to subscribe. We would love that. Until next time, thanks so much for stopping by. Take care and God bless. God bless.